What's up, everyone? I haven't been on in a while. I got back from Germany. Uh, actually, I started talking first, okay? So I got back from Germany yesterday. This isn't a joke, actually. I flew in from Germany and my arms are tired now. Um, I'm back home. Had a great time at GitCon. Met a lot of cool people. And looking forward to, uh, you know, continuing to uh, you know, uh, uh, it just, it just was a really, really interesting experience. I have a video coming out tomorrow that, uh, is one of the ones I took. I've got a couple of videos that I made there that I'm going to release over the next few days and, um, pretty psyched. It was a great experience. Um, a couple announcements. My Led Zeppelin video was just taken down five minutes ago. That was episode 43, so that was uh, four episodes ago of What Makes the Sun Great. Uh, I, see the, I see the YouTube thing that I get, and I said, oh, brother. It says copyright notice on the top of it, and I said, oh, here we go. Which one is it? And then I looked at it first. I was a little bit confused, and I thought, what? Oh, and I was like, oh, man, it's Zeppelin. And then there's a second one that says the, copy, the, the video's been blocked worldwide. So... 260 something thousand 360,000 I don't know how many views it had it had a lot of views um, and gone for good so it'll be up on flat5.com along with all the other uh, videos that have been taken down yes um, Queens of the Stone Age Fleetwood Mac Led Zeppelin I think that's four out of 47 which you know and that's not too bad I guess Anyways, uh, so Zeppelin, I fooled them with the uh, with what I put in the description. Apparently, it fooled the the algorithm for a month, which is pretty good. So maybe I can get away with a few others. Although the, you know, when I did Fleetwood Mac, I've tried to fool it with the same thing, putting the same description in there, and it didn't work. So whatever. Uh, okay, so. Uh, another announcement. Okay, so I haven't done a sale in a while because I haven't been on in, oh God, probably five days or so. Everything's on sale, 20% off, Beato Book, RB1015, so 1015, today's date. Uh, we're talking, this is a theory lecture. We haven't done one in a while. We're talking about color tones. So what are color tones? You know, Charlie Parker had this, this saying, he said, it's just plain, clean, and looking for the pretty notes. Pretty notes were the color tones. Color tones are also called upper extensions. Um, now, there's, there are different types of color tones that, uh, that I, I, I think of them in different ways. There, there are color tones that are, most color tones are a half step away from a chord tone, okay? So if I take a major scale here, let's say I've got a major scale. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, color tones here. So the fourth is a color tone, but here the second is also a color tone. Now that's not a half step away in a major scale. This one is. In a minor scale, that would be a half step away. But your color tones are your upper extensions. So your two, your four, and your six, okay? Um, this is your ninth. We call them upper extensions because you tend to find them when you play through the scale, it's on the upper side of the scale. So those notes come in, even though you have them lower, two, four, and six, typically though, people talk about color tones as being upper extensions. So, so your two, is going to be your 9, your, your 4 is 11, and your 13 is your 6. So if I start to scale here, let's say I take G major. So that's your first active. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then you start over. 8, 9, so there's your, there's your 9. That's what a 9th is. It's the 9th scale degree from the root. The 11th is going to be 9, 10, 11, and then 12, 13. Okay? As you get further away from the root, the notes, like the 13th, these color tones, like 13th doesn't quite work as well as some of the other color tones on a major chord because 
it's a whole step from that, from the seventh, and it's a whole step from the fifth. Okay, color tones that are a half step away have a stronger resolution tendency to move to the chord tone. Okay, so if I have a G chord, the second moves down to the root or can move up to the third. So the second can actually hang there, the ninth. Okay, it's a good note you can sit on. But the fourth wants to resolve down. The sixth has the same deal as the ninth. But that really wants to move up to the major seventh or down to the fifth. Now, there's another color tone here, the sharp 11, okay? That would be the sharp four. Now, the sharp 11 is from the Lydian scale. That note is a half step away from the fifth, and it sounds like this. So, that really has that strong pull to go up to that is a half step away from the sixth okay so that would be this kind of a sound I'd have to actually play a different voicing I'm gonna play just this uh, root and third and a seventh like this okay there it is right there that's the sharp five That sounds great going up to that, going up to that sixth. Okay, cool, cool sound. That's called a Lydian augmented sound. Okay, that would be a color tone as well. And because that's a half step away from the sixth, that's an upper extension that is used, is, is uh, more, I would say, adventuresome. Or you'd play that. People that are more advanced in what they hear will hear that note before other notes because it's um, it comes from the melodic minor scale or it comes from different scales outside the major scale. That sharp five on the uh, on this. So this here sharp five would be a color tone. Okay. So these are your typical color tones that you have on major chords. All right. You can have the sharp nine as well. There's a thing called Lydian sharp nine. I have a video on it that is actually one of my favorite videos. It's a mode from the harmonic minor scale. You should check it out, Lydian sharp nine, and you can find it in the Beato book too. I talk, I, I have a, I got a, a uh, you'll, you'll find those sounds. I have some voicings for it. And uh, this would be a voicing of Lydian sharp nine. Check this out. That's something Alan Holdsworth would play. I think it's a really beautiful sound. Okay, that sharp nine here sounds like a minor third. You have to have the major third in there for it to, to really give it that sound uh, with a major seven. That's a more, once again, adventuresome kind of note to use, and you have to use it really carefully. You have to be playing over that kind of a chord to make that note work, okay? So these are the upper extensions here. Sharp nine is a good one here for this. But once again, this is, these are, are more modern sounding. That's, if you want your playing to sound different from people that what people would normally play there okay let's talk about minor chords minor chords have a lot of upper extensions as well so do dom i mean all all scales do but minor chords are interesting here 
So if I take a, take a minor chord, one, I'll take a regular natural uh, minor scale, one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven. This is your natural minor scale. Now there's many types of minor scales. A minor scale can basically be anything that has a flat third and a natural fifth, okay? Because your minor triad, let's say I take A minor. One, oh, I saw the super chat thing. I'll get to that question here in a minute. I'm trying to do this first here. So here's your minor triad. One, flat, three, five. So this would be A minor, all right? Now, here's my color tones. I've got the two, once again, which is the ninth. The four is the 11, and the flat six is really the, uh, would be the flat 13, okay? Uh, so those against the chord, if I play A minor like this, I've got the, the, uh, the nine. I have the flat six. At six. It's a half step. It wants to resolve to the fifth. There's your flat six. Okay. Here's your eleven. Eleven's a beautiful note there. So here's your flat six. resolution tendency to the closest chord tone. They, they want to resolve either to the, uh, if there's a half step below it, they want to resolve down to that. Or if there's a half step above, they want to resolve to that. But they can really re resolve to the, you can hang on them, or you can go down to the nearest scale tone. The ninth, you can go to the, either to the root or, or go up to the flat third. Okay, the 11, can go down to the flat third, which is a whole step done, or up to the fifth, which is a whole step up. And the flat 13, or the flat six, typically will, will I mean, you can go up to the flat seven. Okay, now, there are many types of sixths and sevenths that you can use on minor chords, the natural six, that's the, the, that would be just a 13. So it sounds like a minor 13 chord, which is one of my favorite sounds, is really a Dorian sound. So I'll play this A minor chord again. Okay, this would be, there's your natural six. six there it is there's your nine there's your sixth here's your flat six natural six very, very different sound. That natural six is nice pushing up to the flat seven. Okay? Can also have the major seven. Can also be a color tone, even though it's part of the chord. When it's a major seven, it sounds more unusual. There you go. That's when you got... Stairway to Heaven. That major seventh there gives you a minor major seventh chord. Okay, and that wants to really resolve up to the root. Okay? 
So you got your flat six, you got your natural six, you have your major seven. Okay. So you got seven, so you get flat seven, major seven, flat 13, regular 13. You can have your flat nine or your flat two. Okay, the flat two is your Phrygian sound. That's gonna be this kind of a sound. flat two, your flat nine, that's an upper extension, okay? Um, so these are, are really your common color tones on minor chords. You could have sharp fours. There are modes that, that go beyond the major melodic minor and harmonic minor that if you have the coffee mugs, you know what they are, okay? This isn't a shameless plug, but this will actually show you, if you look at this, I have Dorian flat five. So the flat five can be a color tone, okay? Because it's out of your normal, uh, would be out of the normal, uh, the Dorian sounds would normally have a fifth in it. But when you have a flat five, that actually belongs to the next group of chords, which are your half diminished sounding chords. Okay, so I'm gonna call this a minor flat five which belongs to the Locrian. So you have, you have a bunch of chords that, there's two common types of, so hold on, one, two, flat three, four, flat five, flat six, flat seven. Okay, this would be a Locrian scale right here, flat two, sorry. So your color tones here are your flat nine, your 11, and your flat 13. Those are your upper extensions. They will give you chords like this. This would be a minor 11, flat five. Okay, that 11th. Here's your flat nine. Natural nine on it. That's a great sound. That's one of my favorite sounds on on a half diminished chord. Okay, if I play it, there's your natural nine. Here's your flat nine. Here's your natural nine. extensions on half diminished chords okay any chord that has a one flat three and flat five would be half diminished and it has to have a flat seven in it otherwise if you have a double flat and seven then you get in your diminished diminished chord which does not belong in this family 
Uh, but let's talk about dominant chords. Dominant chords are the ones that people are typically familiar with the upper extensions, and you hear them named all the time. This is really the common ones that everybody, when you, when you hear stuff, when you hear people talk about dominant chords, so you got one, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven. Dominant chords, anything with a flat seven, pretty much, and a major and a natural third. Okay, if it's got a flat, if it's got a third and a flat seven, it's going to be called a dominant chord. So you have your natural nine, you have your sharp nine, you have your flat nine. Those are your color tones, your upper extensions. You have your sharp four, right? That would give you a mixed sharp 11 sound. You have your sharp five. Okay, this is also known as the flat five here. Because some scales, it is actually a flat five. You also have your flat 13. Don't be confused. The flat 13 is another name for the sharp five. That's like a flat six, but people call it a flat 13. Now, why do they call it these? Well, some scales have a natural 13, and they have a sharp four, like the dominant diminished scale. Let's say I've got A7 right here with a, uh, with a flat nine. So it's got, it's got one flat nine, sharp nine, major third. Then it's got the, uh, the flat five and, and the, or sharp four, natural five. Then it's got the 13, not the flat 13, and then the flat seven. It's an octatonic scale. It's got eight notes. It's a half whole diminished scale, or what I call the dominant diminished, because it goes with dominant chords. So I'll give you the chord again. Whoops. Okay, so that is uh, that gives you that that is a scale that has a sharp four and a natural thirteen. The sixth is also called, I should probably do it like this, 13 flat 13, okay? Now, there are other scales <clears throat> that use all, that use the uh, these notes. Like, for example, you have the Mixolydian scale that I have written out here, which would give you just a dominant. So that's your ninth. You can have your sharp four together. Color tone, there's your fifth, 13. Sharp four. That would be your mixed sharp 11 scale. It's got the natural nine, it's got the sharp four, and it's got the natural 13 in it. You can all also have the alter dominant scale. Now, the alter dominant scale contains all, it's called the alter dominant scale because it really contains all the alterations. One, flat two, flat three, flat four, flat five, flat six, flat seven, okay? Now, let's look at this. Flat four is really the third. Don't be confused by that. It's got a flat five and flat six. So we call that, you can say it's a sharp four, sharp five if you'd like. Most people call it a flat 13, though. That's actually a common name for that flat 6, that sharp 5 there. It's a flat 13. Uh, when I'm playing over this, there's my flat 13. That's the alter dominant scale. It's a great, great scale to be used for... Um, you can use it, in, um, it's used in jazz all the time, but you can use it in rock. But you gotta really know what you're doing if you're using it in rock. Guys that would use the scale that I, rock players, Guthrie Govan, plays the alter dominant scale. I've heard him play it many times. Um, uh, guys like Robin Ford, Larry Carlton, they play the dominant diminished scale all the time. They, they use that, that sound. They don't play, the, uh, no, Robin Ford will play the alter dominant scale, and Larry Carlton will play the triads from the alter dominant scale. So if I just play the root, root uh, flat seven and third, I can play these triads. 
So I'm playing like the uh, triad. These are triad pairs. Pairs. So F major, E flat major, F major, E flat major. So. chords like this. That's really cool. Those are very, very cool altered sounds. Okay, I'm going to take some questions now. Let's see, what do we got here? Oh man, got a lot of questions. These are your color tones, so your upper extensions. These are what makes your playing sound cool. Uh, let's see what we got here. Let me lower this a little bit and see what people are writing here. What's up, Dean? CHK, what's happening? Uh, let's see here. Let me raise this just a little bit. I'll go like this. Sorry. Okay. Was there playing altered dominant or half hold diminished scale based on the flat 13 or natural? Yes. Uh, so the, the, that's the, the altered dominant scale has the natural 13 or flat 13, I'm sorry. And the dominant diminished scale has the natural 13. Uh, that, I mean, that's, that's to, that, that is the way to know the difference between the two scales. It confuses a lot of people. Um, the thing that's confusing is that dominant diminished scale, the half hold diminished scale actually has eight notes, whereas the ultra dominant scale has seven notes in it. This is what, uh, this is what gets confusing. So you actually have one extra note on that scale. So the, the one thing to remember is that the diminished scale, the half old diminished scale or dominant diminished scale has a natural 13 and it's got all the other alterations, sharp nine, flat nine, uh, sharp four, okay? But, but natural five, natural six, whereas the uh, dominant, whereas the ultra dominant scale has the flat five and flat six. Okay. There's no fifth in that chord. So the, the ultra dominant scale is built off an augmented triad where the dominant diminished scale is built off a major triad. That is really the distinct, uh, difference between those. If you take the major triad, let's say a major, okay. You're saying a seven chord and you take an a major triad. You move that triad in minor thirds, a, a major, up a minor third to C, up a minor third to E flat, and up a minor third to F sharp. Those are your triads that go over an A7 chord that are from the dominant diminished scale. They're always a minor third away from the root major triad. Okay, so think of A, then up a minor third to C, up a minor third to E flat, up a minor third to F sharp. Okay, so those, those are all related. The other thing that's related is that you can take those triads and you can make a minor. A minor, C minor, E flat minor, F sharp minor. You can also take those and make Lydian triads. If you go and watch my, my diminished scale video, I have a video on the dominant diminished scale. I have, I have three videos on the diminished scale that you should really go back and watch. I think that they're um, some of my best videos. I think that they got progressively better. I think my third installment is probably the uh, probably the best one of the three, but I think that they're all good. Well, the first one is more to how to use it in film scoring and classical music. Um, what unusual scales to use are good to navigate the bridge and Stella? So the bridge and Stella is uh, goes to a G seven sharp five. Okay, that's this here. Let me turn this down a little bit like this. So this, da, 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 da. right? So when it goes to this, whoops, let me turn it this way so you, get, so you can see the neck. There we go. So when you play this G7 sharp five, that's your scale that will work on that, but you can also use whole tone. That's kind of, I don't want to 
don't say corny sounding to use whole tone. Co whole tone can be cool, but it's a little bit. If you play some cool patterns in it, like that would be a more of a con cool. That's like more of a prog pattern, I would say, right? It's a pattern in seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a great, that's, that's cool sound. But I prefer that altered scale. But you can you can also play on the bridge to Stella. You can also play because you're coming out of. You don't have to play altered. You can play. You can also play that. That's a different, you know. I was playing the wrong thing. Hold on. I was playing sharp five again. Ah, I just get so used to that sharp five sound in there. Hold on. So there's your sharp now. When you do that, you have to play the natural 13. The tricky thing with Stella is that in the melody is, is the sharp five because it goes there. So you can play that dominant diminished sound there. You can play that, that sound, but really, it's really this. That's really the sound of, of Stella by Starlight, of the bridge. All this stuff is in the Beato book, which I have right here, but I don't want to confuse people. I printed mine out. It comes in a PDF. You can have it printed out though, but all that theory stuff here that we're talking about is all here in black and white. And it's, uh, it tells you exactly what to play on what. It shows you how all the resolution tendencies happen with all these things. It's 461 pages long. It gives you all the rules for chord substitutions. It gives you all the rules for theory. Everything that you need to know about music theory is pretty much in here. Uh, it talks about minor pentatonics. It talks about major pentatonics. It talks about altered pentatonics. Like here's a B7 sharp nine sharp five, and it talks about the altered uh, altered pentatonic on it. One sharp nine, three sharp five flat seven. Um, there's a Dorian flat two pentatonic. There's a B flat augmented major pentatonic. These are ones that uh, that are not normally talked about. These these type of pentatonics that that you hear guys like Mike Brecker play stuff like that. Kind of hipper people that play more interesting things that are um, that are trying to find these fresh sounds to play. I think that that's. Um, uh, I think that that's the kind of stuff that I'm always looking for. I'm always looking for those, for those new sounds. Uh, but the things about these symmetrical scales, like the dominant diminished, though, that are cool, is that, let's say I have the A7 chord. You can get some cool shapes in there. A lot of people will play these kind of shapes. That kind of shape there, that all minor thirds. I don't know if you can see that. That's it. That's your sound, your diminished. That's 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 a diminished. I love that natural thirteen against that. You hear that tr that major triad? You hear that minor triad in there, right? I got F sharp major and F sharp minor right there. F sharp major, F sharp minor, E flat major, E flat minor. 
So you got the minor and major of all those triads are within that scale. That's the stuff that I was talking about that sounds, to me, really cool. But but that that you know. Schofield play a lot of licks. Play a lot of those, you know. That's a cool, cool sound. Those are all the triads out of that, out of the diminished, uh, out of that dominant diminished scale. Uh, what us see what else? Frog Champ, you finally caught the stream. There you go. Dean, along with going up minor thirds off the root, can you also go up a whole step from the root, then go up minor thirds for dominant diminished? Okay, so in the dominant diminished scale, there are two diminished seventh chords that are a, that are a step apart, half step apart, right? So there they are. So there's really two diminished seventh. So I'm going. Here's the deal. This is a this is kind of a cool thing. A dominant diminished scale is actually made up of two diminished seventh chords, right? Let me show you this. This is uh, interesting. It's made up of two diminished seventh chords, a half step apart. Okay, so. If I take an A dominant diminished scale, I'll call it A dom dim. That's the shortcut, my shortcut, dom dim. If you have uh, an A diminished seventh chord equals A diminished seventh plus B flat diminished seventh. Okay? Well, what are the notes here? A, C, E flat. F sharp, okay? This is B flat, all right? And then you move up minor third, B flat to D flat. Then D flat goes up to E, right? Which would be the fifth. I'm kind of spelling it weirdly. And E goes up to G. So here's your two diminished seventh chords that are part of the A dominant diminished scale. That's why it's a, an eight note scale. That's your those are your two parts of the scale, okay? The root, sharp nine, sharp nine flat five, or, or sharp four, I'm sorry, 13. Upper extensions, right there. Flat nine. D flat is really C sharp, that's your third. That's, that's called an en enharmonic spelling, right? That's a hidden, hidden enharmonic. E is the fifth, G is the flat seven, okay? So most people think of this A7 flat 9 chord as a B flat diminished 7th chord on top of an A bass note, and that will give you the sound. But there's a lot of cool things that you can do if you use both those diminished 7th arpeggios. Think of Ingve, although Ingve doesn't really do this. If I play this, okay, and I'm going to play this... Um, There's my B-flat diminished seventh arpeggio. Then this. So I've got both of those. Whoops, there.
So that's cool. So I'm playing in. I'm playing those those diminished seventh chords. That's cool sound, right? I do that it just always reminds me of John Schofield I don't know why but uh, the same thing is that if you take each of these you take a diminished uh, seventh chord C diminished seventh chord E flat diminished seventh chord F sharp diminished seventh chord and then take B flat diminished seventh D flat diminished seventh E diminished seventh G diminished seventh all those diminished seventh chords work because they're all a minor third apart and it's just uh, they're you're just recycling all the same notes um, okay, so that's that's really kind of how this stuff works. Let me see about some more questions. There was a um, there was a super chat here. I saw. Where's that super chat question, Aaron? Where is this? Okay, Marcus. What would you say here, Marcus? Just says, "Hey, Rick. What's up, Marcus? Thank you." Okay, other questions here. Um. Is Eastern music more melodically advanced than Western music? And the opposite with harmony and rhythm? Um, yes, I would say, I wouldn't say rhythm though. It's more advanced melodically. Um, I went to see um, Zakir Hussein play with, uh, Chris, Chris Potter was playing with them and Dave Holland was playing bass and um, Gino Banks, um, I'm trying to think who else, and his dad were, were both playing in the band, um, and it was amazing. Uh, I'm trying to think of the singer, though, because um, they, they were doing some traditional Indian folk music, folk melodies. They were unbelievable. The, these were these, um, they used a lot of quarter tones, uh, I mean, it was absolutely stunningly beautiful. Um, I, I, it was really, I, I honestly wish I brought my son Dylan to it because I think he would have really, really appreciated that. Um, so, super sophisticated. They were playing because they were combining that with jazz. That's kind of, you know, that you're getting a lot of really cool rhythmic things going on with Zakir and you're getting the harmonic backing of jazz players that can play traditional Indian music. These, all these guys that were Indian musicians, half the band were Indian musicians, and they were playing, but, but they're also great jazz, modern jazz players. And that's a very, very cool, um, to me, a very cool sound. It's like Mahavishnu. That's kind of what John McLaughlin was doing, was, was, was actually combining those elements. Uh, but that's a, that's an interesting, um, I think that's a really interesting perspective or way to think of it is that I wouldn't say all Eastern music. I'd say Indian music, Turkish music, uh, although I'd think of Turkey being, in, you know, well, I guess half of Turkey is in the West and half is in the East. Uh, but the folk music of these, uh, of these cultures are... Um, are, are rhythmically, some of it is very rhythmically sophisticated and uses a lot of quarter tones and a lot of, you know, really great notes, uh, modal interchange and things like that. In, in addition to using, um, to using microtones or quarter tones, beautiful, beautiful stuff. Um, I wish that I got to see them play on that tour again. If anybody, any of you get to see Zakir Hussein play with a band that he that he had, I don't know if they're still out touring, but Chris Potter and Dave Holland um, were in the band and it was just stunningly great. Really, really great. 
Um, isn't Eastern music based on dr drones? It depends on who's playing it. If it's jazz musicians like there that were playing it, it was uh, it was unbelievable. Uh, the um, the the pianist Lewis Banks is is amazing. He's a jazz player, but he's an, you know he's a legend there. Indian bebop hard. He's not even a bebop player. He's a modern jazz player, and and uh, um, but th the singer um, just was was un unreal. I'm trying to think who the singer was now. It was it was really great though. Okay. Um, Ryan, have I ever tried to guess the pitches in your environment, like street noise, train horns, lights? I do this, drives people nuts. Don't do that then. Uh, is it possible to overload the brain with doing solfege? No way. Listening to plenty of high information content, just practicing music and genre. Yeah. Uh, what? What? Wait, what is this? What were your exams like when you were a professor? How do you judge if someone really learned these concepts? Um, how do you judge? Uh, well, you, you just like you give anybody a test, you know, do they, do you, do you have them down? Can you demonstrate them pretty much? Uh, Gino Banks playing with Guthrie in, in India. Yeah. Gino is a great guy. Uh, great, great player, great drummer. Um, yeah, I was really, really blown away by that. I, I like I said, I, I wish that uh, I wish I had taken my son Dylan to it because um, I really wanted his ears to hear those sounds because it was absolutely stunningly beautiful. It was it was uh, it's one of the best concerts I've been to in years. Um, let's see what else. Am I coming to New York? Yes, I want to talk about this. So I'm going to be in New York this Friday for AES. That's uh, what is it? The Audio Engineering Society. Aaron, help me out with this. Is that what it what it's called? Audio Engineering Society. I know somebody asked me today what it was, and I said I don't know. My buddy Pat. Okay, Audio Engineering Society. Um, I'm going to to uh, because I've never been, and I really want to go. It's at the Jacob Javits Center. It's over on the west side. Um, I think it's on 34th Street around that area. Um, kind of, I guess it's kind of Midtown on the West Side Highway. And uh, uh, whether it's starting to turn in New York, might want to rethink that. Nah. Uh, I'm evil for going after to going to get town after what happened to Henning. I don't know who Henning is, so uh, I'm not sure what you. Uh, 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 Aaron Banhammer, this dude, whoever that is, this guy, I'm evil, Mr. Capital Letters there. Ditch him, please. Um, evil. I'm evil for doing something with someone that I don't know. Okay. Thank you. Boom! Banned. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Hudson Yards, is that where it is, Juan? It's on the Hudson River there, pretty much. Uh, do some wholesome pop, please. Uh, I'm not sure what that means, Mega Man. Mega Man Drake. Do you mean like some Drake or something? Uh, Marshall, you're in upstate New York. Usually warmer of anything going to, you're going to Florida, nothing up here. Hey, that's why I moved down south. I admit it, okay? I couldn't deal with another winter up north. I just couldn't. Um... Yeah, it's it's pretty brutal, but but I don't think it's going to be bad. Uh, I don't think it's going to be bad. Let's see, dude. Why is this? What does this sound great about pol, pol, uh, Polyphia? Uh, uh, Polyphia. Um, what what was I listening to with them? Oh, I was listening to their version of Beethoven's um, Fifth Symphony. I think it was pretty hilarious. Um, let's see here. There needs to be a sacrificial ban every stream. <laughs> Cleanse the bad mojo. Thaddeus, yes! I vote for that. Um, oh, so will I do a meetup in New York with your fans, with my fans? Yes, I will. Claude, how are you, Claude? I am going to do a meetup there. Where do you think it should be, though? Because I'm going to live stream from, from there. 
Uh, I think I can get some really cool interviews with people. I'm hoping some, you know, well-known engineers and producers are going to be there. And I can be walking around with my camera and, uh, and, and, my, uh, and, get, and get some cool interviews going on. Um, so, yeah, that's one of the reasons I want to do that. Henning is German dude that started GitCon, then got booted out of it. That's not any of my deal, old guy. I don't know anything about that. I don't care about that. Um, let's see here. If I had a band hammer, there you go. Greetings from Hollywood. Will I come to the West Coast? Jose, I absolutely will come to the West Coast. I'm coming to the West Coast for NAM. I guess in January, I think it is. Anybody know when NAM is? I'm definitely going to come there. Um, let's see here. Is there a code for today? Yes. Pablo, it's RB1015. Aaron just put it in there. 20% off everything. I haven't had a sale in a while, I know. I haven't been on in a while. And I, my streams got screwed up in Germany. Um, um, but the I got the Beato book here. So, you know, I just opened it here and... And I'm talking about uh, tonic chords, super tonic chords, predominant chords, dominant chords, everything. Suspended triads, other three note structures, harmonic minor, melodic minor, major, natural minor, double harmonic major. I mean, it's all in here. Everything you need to know to follow along, that's what you really should do, is I come on my live stream and you open up your books and I'll say, I should do this. I'll say, okay, everybody, open to page 35. We're going to do a Roman numeral analysis and chord scale choice lesson here. And then I'll talk about it. Um, did I do my Bach video yet, Martin? I am working on it right now as we speak. I shot some of it. I've shot the video. I'm, I'm editing it right now. I'm pretty psyched about it. I have a video. I did a, I did a video with Adam Neely. I don't know if any of you saw Adam make his appearance in my Pearl Jam video, but uh, he did a little quick bass demonstration in it of a of a um, harmonic slide on the bass. Um, so uh, okay, so Nam, thank you, Chip. Nam is the twenty fourth through twenty seventh of January. I will be in LA then. Um, I have a "What Makes This Song Great" coming up. I'm doing with Sinister Gates. Um, I think this week, actually, I'm going to do it. Um, it's going to make up for my uh, Zeppelin one getting pulled down. Um, and uh, so this will be... I didn't get anyone from Pearl Jam in my Pearl Jam video, but I will get Sinister in the, uh, in the Avenged Sevenfold one. All right. I think I'm good for this. Uh, you guys are the best. Any other questions, leave in the comments section. Uh, what makes us sound great? Baker Street, Dean. I've, a lot of people said that. I'll get to that. My hair is cool. Thank you. Uh, I'm really, uh, um, I'm very hot right now. I don't know why, but man, it is humid out right now. Um... Coheed and Cambria, I will do some Coheed and Cambria. Nice t-shirt. This is, you know what? This is a little bit higher quality t-shirt. You guys think it looks okay or what? I think it, I, I'm looking at it on here. It seems the light, uh, it seems bl uh, more black than my, than my usual one. And uh, I think it looks better for video. We'll see here. Okay, you guys are awesome. I'm going to... Um,